Hello out there, and taking a quick first look today at a new version of the G5 Metamorph from Real Steel. And this one is a, a pretty sweet one, guys, because it has some upgrades to the steel. It also has some upgrades to the scales. And it's one that I wanted to get in front of the camera just ASAP because this version, the first ever Metamorph with the G10 handle scales here, is actually exclusive to the people over at Indiana Knives. So Indiana Knives has this knife as an exclusive, and it just came out. And I wanted to get it in front of the camera quickly because I don't know how long they're going to have it in stock. I don't know how big the run is. I don't know if there's going to be a second run. I don't know any of that stuff. So, yeah, just giving uh, you guys the opportunity to check this out, especially because I know how popular a model this is for real steel. And I also know that one of the biggest gripes about it was just how slick the uh, the aluminum handle scales are. Um, having something like G10 on this design is going to be a, a, a big deal for a lot of people. So, again, just wanted to um, to let you guys check it out very briefly today. But there will be a full review and another video about this in the future. But yeah, there are just some talking points I want to get uh, out there right now. Now, as it stands, I do also need to say thank you to the people at Indiana Knives because they sent this knife my way uh, for free. Not to check out, not on loan, not to send to somebody else afterwards, like for me to keep. And if you follow the channel, you probably know that that just doesn't happen here. <laughs> this isn't that kind of channel. It never has been. Uh, anytime I get something free, which I think it's happened like once or twice, I tend to pass it along to you guys. And guess what? That's going to happen with this knife too. So uh, stay tuned. At the end of the video, I'll give a little bit of a teaser as to uh, when and, and how that might be taking place. But today, guys, I do just want to hit on the high points. We're going to do the size comparisons and the weight, and then just hit on a couple of the uh, the big upgrades that make this a, a significant new release from Real Steel. All right, so starting with the size of the knife, what you might notice in just the general design and the shape is that this thing is super long. And to be honest, it's really not that long. It just seems that way because it has almost no height. So taking a look at it with size comparisons, uh, the first thing I think about is the Benchmade 943. So the 943 is actually uh, in height pretty similar to this real steel, but you can see it is a little bit shorter. We have about a three, like 3.33 inch cutting edge, just under 3.5 inches of cutting edge on the real steel. And overall, I mean, we're going eight inches plus of overall length. So yeah, it is pretty long, um, but when you look at it next to, like, say, a PM2, the PM2 is longer overall, but it does have a shorter cutting edge. So it's not that long of a knife. Again, it just sort of seems that way because of just how um, small in stature it is up and down. Um, another size comparison, just for fun, why not? Here's a Spyderco, Spyderco Sage 5. And I also have a smock line around, so why not do that? All right, but one of the big selling points on this knife, at least for me, is versatility. Um, what I liked about it when I first handled one was that it felt pretty good in hand, but it seemed like a pretty well-built tool, but it's also super light. Could, could be versatile as far as being a gents folder. You have that front flipper aspect. So there's just a lot of um, aspects of the knife that could be appealing for a number of reasons. And I definitely like that. But the ones that I want to focus on from here on out for the rest of the video are really just the scales, the steel, and then like the action and the lockup. And the scales are going to play into ergo, so we will probably end up talking about everything. But starting with the scale, so my experience with that that other metamorph, the aluminum one, was that, man, scales were a little bit slippery. So credit to Real Steel for trying to improve that, that aluminum as much as they could uh, over the course of a number of different incarnations, but the G10 here is definitely a big upgrade. I do have to tell you, though, when I unboxed this knife, I had about a 15-minute period of time where I just didn't really like it. <laughs> I got over it pretty quick, 
but uh, I think maybe it was just that this is just a different kind of knife. The size and the weight ratio, just very different. So it felt super light and maybe like cheap for that reason. Also, you can see, even though there is chamfering on the edges here, that these scales are a little bit blocky. And so, yeah, it just takes some getting used to. And um, I, I sort of... I sort of had them grow on me pretty quick, but at first it just didn't seem quite right. Uh, the traction on the scales is very good. It is, I'd say, medium traction. Not quite high, but I mean, it's definitely very grippy. So they did go all out, making sure that they weren't going to have any like slickness issues like they did with the aluminum. One big thing to talk about is the color, though. And... Um, what you won't be able to see on camera, I've been struggling with this, is just how not blue these blue scales are. <laughs> and I know that's a little bit confusing, especially because the box here, it says blue, but this isn't really blue in any like way that I've seen blue knives before. I'm going to bring in some other blue stuff for comparison, but even that isn't really going to do it justice. So here's the, the, le excuse me, the Leatherman juice. <laughs> Benchmade Mini Griptilian, but that's like a light blue. Actually, for comparison, here's like the old Benchmade box. And I guess these look pretty close, but maybe you can start to see like that little purplish kind of accent. It sort of looks more purple than like blue. That's really what I'm getting at. You know, and, and I guess the best way to explain this Maybe some of you will understand this. I didn't. <laughs> but when I unboxed this knife, my wife was there, and I was looking at it, and I was like, that is not blue. And she goes, no, that's periwinkle. And guys, I don't know what the hell periwinkle is. I thought it was a flower. I didn't know it was a color. Maybe it's like orange, and it's both. I, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't care. But she said it's periwinkle. For me, <laughs> I look at it, and I see like purplish blue. Maybe blue, but like it's more purple. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a photo of the knife in real life and the knife in the like the frame of the camera at the same time, so that maybe you can get an understanding of that. And you're looking at that right now, and hopefully it's not like too many boxes within boxes, but uh, but hopefully that'll give you some context. And and yes, now we are done talking about periwinkle and purple. Three minutes later, I'm sorry, but it's important if color matters to you on a knife, and for me it does. <laughs> so that's really all I have to say about the scales. Um, it's definitely a big improvement, uh, even though it did take some getting used to. The color might not be for everybody, but honestly, I think it's definitely for me. If I could do one thing though with the color, I'd probably change like the backspacer color and, and wouldn't keep it the same color all the way through, but that's just a minor thing. Um, getting into the steel, so what we have is N690 instead of the 14C28N. And I'm on record saying I like Sandvik. I, I really do. I think it's a great user steel, a really good, um, I used to call it a mid-grade steel, but I guess in this day and age it's a budget steel. I don't, I don't know, but uh, it's a good user steel. And really easy to sharpen, but N690 is just better. Um, N690 is excellent when it comes to corrosion resistance. My experience with edge retention with N690 is really, really good. And especially with a knife that's as, as thin as this, I think that having something that will hold an edge a little bit longer will be uh, really beneficial. So really nice that they did that. And if I didn't mention it already, and, and guys, I'm on literally on take like 55 of this video. I, I don't know what I've said in this, in this cut and what I haven't. But uh, the big impressive thing is that the price point on this knife hasn't changed from the previous versions of the Metamorph. So I think $59.60 is the price that you're going to pay on Indiana Knives, and that's the same price as the Sandvik version with the aluminum scales. So if you value uh, these materials over the previous versions, then you're definitely getting a big boost in value as well. Um, one more thing I want to talk about is the jimping, ergos, and the action. So the jimping is just wonderful with this. Um, the ergos on the uh, the Metamorph series are good just in general. Uh, the G10 traction definitely improves that, but it's the jimping that just makes it an absolute home run because of just the amount of it that you have. It's not perfect, but it grips the thumb enough and there's enough of, of it that it just makes it a very comfortable knife. 
And then you have this depression up here, which is actually just a really good spot to have for uh, for draw cuts. So yeah, I really do just like this. And obviously when I do the full review, I will follow up about that. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is the action. And guys, I'm gonna to try to do this on camera. And if I screw it up, we're just gonna roll with it. Front flipping, um, I'm not that good at it yet. There we go. <laughs> um, it's very smooth. It's crisp. And that's definitely a positive thing. And then, I mean, that's just free dropping. Guillotining my finger. So yeah, it is super smooth. One thing I will say is that there isn't any Loctite used on the pivot. And while it doesn't have any movement right now, the more you fidget with it, it might loosen up and you might have to just hit it with a T8. Not really a big deal, but definitely something to be aware of and and have that. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, lockup is, is very good. No up and down, just that left and right as it loosens. But um, I've only had to adjust that once and I've been just fidgeting with this all night. So not really a big deal. One thing I will mention, even though the lockup is very solid, um, and, and I almost left this out because I thought it was crazy, and, and maybe I am, but I do want to just bring it to your attention, is the cutout here for the liner lock just seems a little bit deeper than it needs to be. And so when you disengage, you tend to push further than you need to. And yeah, maybe I'm just like crazy. I'm gonna bring in, if I do have a liner lock, and of course I put them all away, but oh, here, here's a good one. So the CRKT Ripple, like the liner is thick enough that when you disengage it, it's not going that far away from, you know, the lock interface. And here there's just a little bit of a gap that, you know, in design, it just seems odd. But I mean, just in opening and closing the knife, um, Again, it's something that it, it's just different from what I'm used to feeling, but I don't think that there's any big like safety issue, but it's something that jumped out at me when I first disengaged the knife. So yeah, overall though, guys, I mean, this is a, a pretty darn good design. And I think that this exclusive is a, a really good idea. And I'll be surprised if they don't have more G10 versions coming out and different handle materials too, because this is only gonna be um, even more attractive to uh, the G5 Metamorph fans, uh, <laughs> especially at the same price point as the previous version. So, yeah, very cool. And thank you again to Indiana uh, Knives for sending this one my way. What we are going to be doing between me and Zach from Zach Stuff, because he got one of these two, we are going to be collaborating on some kind of giveaway. We don't know the details yet, but two knives are going to be given away. He's going to give away his. I'm going to give away mine. He might do his on YouTube, and I might do mine on Instagram, something like that. But guys, definitely stay tuned. Uh, after I carry this for a while and do a review, we'll be getting back into it and, um, and giving these away and finding them new homes. So yeah, pretty exciting there. Stay tuned. I am going to do a couple a uh, a couple of your questions today, and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, but thanks very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. And all right, guys, we have a couple quick questions today that I'm going to answer. The first one is, what do I think was my best knife mod ever? And I'll show it to you because I still own it. It was actually the subject of the third video I ever did on this channel, and it is this Kershaw leak with the Tiger Stripes. Um, I think I've done some pretty cool stuff since I started doing mods, but I don't know that I've done anything, executed anything, to this level since. You know, I've been a little bit more creative, and a lot of the procedures and processes that I use don't require a level of precision that this knife has. And honestly, guys, I, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I had the the patience that this required, you know. And looking at it now, I don't think that I could execute this this well again. Even after a couple years of a lot more experience, like I just, I don't know. I look at it and I'm like, wow, I'd pretty happy with it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I just ripped this this design, this tiger stripe design, like literally line for line, stripe for stripe from a Brian Ty picture in a magazine. And um, and yeah, I must have put a lot of time into making it as clean as possible because it doesn't look like there's a lot of spots where I messed up at all. So yeah, I'm pretty darn happy with this one. Um, hoping to get back into doing more mods more often. That was a big part of this channel um, up until recently, and I've just been behind in life and focused on reviews and other aspects of the channel, but hopefully getting back into some of that stuff soon, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, the second question is, will there be an end? Will there be an end to the hobby? Will I ever find the perfect knife and just call it a day? Well, that's two parts to a question. Uh, the first one, will this obsession ever end? I don't know. Uh, I can't say for sure. I have an addictive personality. I'm a serial hobbyist and I learn a lot about a certain thing and then mm -hmm. I tend to move on to something else. And with knives, I sort of am thinking that that's not going to be the case. I think that I'm going to stay in the game for a long time, hopefully because, uh, mostly because of the people. You know, when I'm obsessed with other things, there's there's not a community involved that I've met and that I've become very good friends with and built relationships in. So that's something that I think is going to make this channel and, and my interest in it stick around is just that level of camaraderie that I've never had with other hobbies before. So, you know, that's one big part of it. The other part is that I don't really look for the perfect knife. I'm not worried about trying to find the perfect knife. I am always looking for the next knife, but the perfect one, it's its just, it's not about one knife, you know, because what you might think is perfect, whoops, there you go, well, screwed up that mod. <laughs> what you might think is perfect won't be perfect to me, and even if I find one that is pretty much checking every single box, um, there's still another that could do it too. And so, yeah, I don't think that for me the hobby would end just because I found the best knife. It's not about that. It's it's always about um, the search for more and for more value and just, I don't know, just continuing to explore what the whole process is about, whether that's making videos or or learning about different aspects of knives. There's so much more to it that I haven't even cracked into, so... I don't think I'm going anywhere, guys. Hopefully not, at least. <laughs> and any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. But thanks very much for watching this one. Take care and have a good one.